Good morning, wonderful people of God. It's so good to be with you again today. And it's so good to, to continue in the Gospel of John. Um, and you really are, by, by going through the Word, by becoming a student of the Word, you are doing yourself such a favor. The, the best thing that you can do for your life is to love this, to love being in it, to love studying it, to be a student of it. Um, you know, we, we don't always realize what the absence of the word in our life does until sometimes a little while later. So it creeps up on us. The effect of being out of the word creeps up us, on us little by little. And before we know it, we are a great distance away from God. We're not close to him anymore. We're not walking um, as he did, we are not being like Christ, we are not being victorious. So the best thing you can do for your life is to love the Word, to be in it every day. And there are going to be days where, you may, where your flesh is not going to feel like it. But we need to go overcome our flesh and we need to, to feed the Spirit, as we're going to look at um, in, in one of our lectures as well, just how we healed to the Spirit of God. Amen. So today we're going to jump into chapter 17. Um, and chapter 17 is a, is a very precious chapter because it really just covers um, Jesus' prayer after he had spoken to the disciples about all those different um, important topics that we've covered. So, so this prayer is so important. There's so much we can gain from it. There's so much we can learn from how Jesus prayed, what he prayed for. And um, I want us to really just learn to model ourselves according to Christ and how he prayed. Even when he was on this earth, he prayed, he interceded, he connected with the Lord. And very often, in fact, probably 99% of the time, praying for us, praying for his children. So let's just jump right in there, get to John 17. Hope you are becoming more familiar with your Bible. So good. If there's anything that you know well, it must be the Word. Um, there's a lot of things we can be good at, a lot of things we can know well, but the Word is the most important thing that we must be um, really knowledgeable of and very au fait with. So in John 17 it says, After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. The interesting thing there is it's not at all saying that he walked away, he went into his room, but it just says after he'd said this, he looked toward heaven and he prayed. So from that we have to assume that the disciples were with him and were witness to his praying, to his prayer. Um, so they would have gained a lot from that as well. And I want us to jump, if we can, before we really get into chapter 17, to the book of Hebrews. Because here we talk about Jesus praying for us on earth. But if we go to the book of Hebrews, and we look at chapter 7, I'll tell you exactly where now. There we go. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 20, we'll start with 23, in fact 24. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for us. So Jesus prayed on earth, he prayed with his disciples, and he still prays for us today. He intercedes for us as he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is interceding for us. Isn't that a glorious, comforting thought? That Jesus prayed for us on earth, and he continues to pray for us as he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Let's jump back to chapter 17 and let's see what Jesus prayed and, and how he prayed. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given to him. 
that he may give eternal life to all those you have given to him. Referring there to when he died upon the cross, when he paid the price for our sins. And if you can remember the curtain being torn in two, um, giving really symbolic of the barrier that stood between us and God being broken, uh, that barrier being sin. So when Jesus died upon the cross, the curtain physically, the physical curtain in the physical temple was torn in two, being symbolically shown that the, the way into the presence of God now was made open because of Christ. And now because of him, we have eternal life. Because of Jesus, we will continue, we will live forever. When you die, you really just, you're moving house, you're changing location, that's really all that's happening. But in Christ, we have eternal life. In Christ, we will continue living even after we die, and we will live in the permanent fullness of the presence of God. We will live with him in eternity. So yeah, Jesus refers to that. He says, for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. I want us to park there for a minute. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Now, that is a powerful insight into Jesus and into the fact that he was fully committed to completing the work that God had given him to do. God had called him to come. He had brought him to this earth. He sent him to this earth to fulfill a task, to fulfill a purpose. And the reason that that is so important to us is that we need to realize that God has given us a work to do as well. And I want to refer to two scriptures in particular. 1 John verse 4, which I'm sure you've covered in detail in, in the course on 1 John. But I just want to, to draw our attention to it. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, and this is a very short line, but it's a very powerful line. In this world, we are like Jesus. In this world, we are like Jesus, which refers again to back to um, when we were talking about the pruning of the vine, the, the sanctification, because God has called us to be like Christ in this world, both in character and in how we live out our lives. And so when Jesus says here that I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to, to, to do. We need to realize that God has called us to bring him glory in the same way, by finishing the work that he's given us to do. You know, he speaks to us in Ephesians 2 verse 10 about the works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. And so God requires for us to walk in those works and to complete those works. And, and I think of another verse in Colossians 4, verse 17. Remember, I always use the analogy, go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians 4, 4, verse 17. Right at the end, Paul is exhorting Arch Archippus, to Archippus. See to it that you complete the ministry you have received from the Lord. See to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. You see, our greatest purpose upon this earth, as was Christ's, was to complete the work that, that God gives us to do. So God has planned things for us to do for him. And we need our passion, our passion needs to be to, to do that which God has called us to do and to complete it 
to complete it. it to, he, we, we just, he encourages us, Paul encourages us in Colossians and encourages, was speaking to Archippus at that time, but he said, complete the ministry God has given you to do. Are you and I completing the ministry God is giving us to do? Are you walking in the ministry that God has given you to do? Do you know the ministry that God has given you to do? I really challenge you to, to, if you're not walking in it yet, to seek the Lord and say, Lord God, show me that which you want to do, want me to do for you. And you know, sometimes it's not, it's not really, it's not actually hard to work out. It's not hard to figure out what God wants you to do. He has called us to be his light in this world and to, to, to bring reconciliation. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. And therefore, we need our purpose and God's purpose through us is always going to be people. It's always going to be people's lives. It's always going to be ministering to people, um, touching people, sharing the gospel with people, loving people, revealing Christ to people. And so you need to just let the Lord lead you to know where to know how, but his focus will always be people and his focus will always be the message of reconciliation. So those two things, if those are clear in your head, then just go out and do the work that God has placed, has placed before you. God has placed it before us. Sometimes it's, it's, more, um, it's more obvious than we realize. Just be Christ. Be the image of Christ wherever you are. Be the, be the love of God wherever you are. Minister to people, love people, share the truth with them. Amen. And as you find that, continue in it. Continue in it. In your, in your church, in your congregation, commit to the field that God, has, that God has placed you in. Commit to that field. You know, something that is really kind of lacking in the church today is the ability to to commit the ability to to walk with people long term to to serve the lord long term in one place i'm not saying that the lord's not going to call you to different places you know he he calls us in different ways and um but but there is a lack of commitment so often in the church today when things get tough and they will get tough ministry is tough serving the lord is not simple you know, there's a reason that Jesus said, lay down your life, you know. It's a laying down of your life as he laid his life down. Was his life simple on this earth? No, it wasn't. But if we are fulfilling what God has called us to do, it says here, I have glorified your name. We are called to glorify his name. And so when things get hard, sit down, go before the Lord, present it to the Lord, and ask him to give you the courage to stay the course, the courage to walk with people through their toughness, through their, through their difficulties, to walk with them even when it's not easy. Jesus didn't walk with us because it was easy. Jesus did not walk on this earth because it was easy. So we need to have that same attitude of commitment, of being able to walk the distance with people's lives. Amen. Just a little thing to throw into your bubble to meditate upon. Let's continue. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Again, referring to Colossians 1, which we have looked at already, where it says that, let's just jump there quickly, Colossians 1, Colossians 1 verse 15, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. The firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So in him all things were created, which means, which, which refers to this verse that says, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Let's move on to verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of this world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. 
And now they know that everything you have given me comes from you, for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. They believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Again, just speaking of a commitment to the people that God had given to Jesus. He was committed to those who had received the truth and believed the truth and believed that he is who he says he is. And so he, his prayer here is for those who believe and, and who choose to follow Christ and to serve him and to know him. And so our commitment should be to pray for those whom the Lord has given us. Are you and I praying for every individual by name that the Lord has entrusted to us? He has entrusted lives to us. He has entrusted people's, people's walk with him um, to us because we, we are called to preach the gospel. We are called to teach, to admonish, to, to, to disciple people to, in their relationship with the Lord, to guide them, to help them. Are we committed to praying for those people? Not just, just sort of in a blanket sort of, um, uh, Lord, I pray for those people, but are you coming before the Lord every day and saying, Lord, I pray for A, I ask, Lord God, that you will be with them, that you'll cover them and protect them, that you'll help them. Lord, I pray for B in this situation and C in that. And so just as Jesus is praying for every individual that the Lord has entrusted to him, so God is calling us to pray and to intercede for those that the Lord has entrusted to us. God has given us a, a work. God, and that work is centered on people and walking with people, no matter how tough it is. But as you pray for them, as you intercede for them, the Lord gives you wisdom as you, as you, as you teach them, as you lead them. The Lord gives you patience. The Lord gives you courage to continue. And the Lord increases your love for them, increases your love for them as you pray for them. Prayer changes our hearts often more than anything else the main thing is that it changes our hearts and gives us what we need to continue working and serving him amen i pray for them let's jump down to verse 11 i will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world and i'm coming to you holy father protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I love that, that they may be one as we are one. The Lord has called us to unity. In fact, the gospel is a gospel of unity, isn't it? The gospel is one that unites all of us in Christ. Doesn't matter what language we are, doesn't matter what culture we are, doesn't matter what skin color we are, but God has the gospel is a gospel of unity, that we may be one. It says, he says that, so that they may be one as we are one. Remember, the Trinity is, is a reflection of unity and the Godhead. And God has called us as his people to be in unity, to be unified. Though we might be very different, we might say things differently, do things differently, we might um, come from very different backgrounds, but in Christ, and this is the glory of the gospel, is that in Christ we are united. You must always remember that the enemy is the author of division. He's the author of strife. If there's any division amongst us, God did not alter that. He did not ordain that. So whenever there's division, we need to deal with it because God has called us to unity. We need to work through it. We need to, to speak through our differences, speak through our different things that we're not happy with and, and enable and, and 
ask the Lord to bring us to unity again. I'm not saying that we're not going to find things we disagree on now and again, but we have to work through it as the people of God because God in Christ has called us to unity. The Trinity is unified and we as God's people need to be unified as well. You know, the devil... The devil works in division. The devil works in strife. He loves to sow strife. He loves to sow, to, to sow um, just unhappiness amongst people. God has not called us to that. As children of God, we are from the same family, and therefore there needs to be peace. There needs to be unity. Sometimes we need to reach a place of be peace between us through working through things. I'm not saying there's not going to be times that we don't need to work through things, but God has called us to unity. And so therefore, when in this world, um, everyone's um, separated, people are separated based on, on um, and they're divided based on culture, based on skin color, based on um, class and where they've come from all over the centuries. The spirit of this world has been a spirit of separation, a spirit of prejudice, a spirit of disunity. And God, and, and the kingdom of God is a kingdom of unity, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of, of peace. And so we need to strive towards that if we, if we don't find that we are in unity with another brother or sister in the Lord. You need to strive for it. You need to start by praying hard for that relationship and trusting the Lord to bring unity back. Because until there is, while there is disunity, um, the Lord is not pleased. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. Wonderful how the word can ju just teaches us and guides us and gives us wisdom. Let's go to verse 13. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Again, God has called us to joy, not happiness, not things that are based on circumstances, but a, a deep inner joy, a rest that remains there through all trials. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. I have, sorry, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. You see, our purpose is to be on this earth, to serve him, to live for him, to, to do the work that he's given us to do. It it's not, doesn't glorify the Lord if we, live, if we live short lives. It doesn't glorify the Lord if we don't fulfill the complete work that he's given us, to, given us to do. So the Lord has called us. You see, sometimes we want to just be saved from a lot of the difficulties that we go through or saved from the toughness of ministry. <laughs> but Jesus is saying, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one. So the glory is in the victory over the evil one, the, the, um, the walking through things and coming out victorious. So I love this. I, I've given them your word and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Therefore, we mustn't expect, as we've spoken of earlier, to be accepted by the world because as children of God, we won't fit into the world and we're not supposed to. Amen. I'm going to jump down a little bit um, further. And, and he continues talking about they're not of the world, even as I'm not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. You know, sanctification, a setting apart of us. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. The word of God cleanses us. Amen, from all unrighteousness. Verse 18, as you sent me into the world, I've sent them into the world. As you've sent me into the world, I've sent them into the world. Again, called as Christ to fulfill the purpose of God upon our lives. Verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I love this. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. So he's praying for you and I, isn't he? He is. 
says my prayer is not for them alone I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message the their message is here in the Word of God the message of the gospel is right here and so he's not just praying for the disciples he's praying for you and me who now believe in Jesus because of the truth of this gospel that has been written down that all of them may be one father just as you are in me and I am in you may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me again the unity of the Trinity and then the unity of us with the Trinity I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one he really pushes that point of unity doesn't he that they may be one as we are one so that they may be brought to complete unity again then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me you see we need to reflect Christ you need to reflect unity where there's disunity everywhere else the world will look at the unity amongst us as the children of God even though we often just a mixture of people from different backgrounds different cultures the world will be able to look at us and say something different here because they're not used to unity the world is 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 only familiar with disunity and unhappiness and broken relationships but if they can look upon our lives and they can see how unified we are how much we love each other no matter how different we are that reflects Christ it doesn't reflect Christ when as a church we are full of strife full of disunity full of 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 just complaining and, and whinging it reflects Christ when you and I as a as the church are in unity and and um, are at peace and at rest with each other even though we are so different they will notice that love because that's not a natural love that is not a natural love it's easy to love people that are like you it's easy to love people who speak like you and eat like you and like the things that you like it's very different when when you can see true love between a group of people who are very different amen so we are called to reflect the unity of the Godhead verse 24 father I want those you have given me to be with me wherever where I am and to see my glory the glory you've given me because you loved me before the creation of the world righteous father though the world does not know you I know you and they know that you have sent me I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them verse 25 righteous father though the world does not know you I know you and they know that you have me they have sent me I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known so precious just that love that the Lord has for those who believe in him those who follow him that there's a unity that's a that there's a an eternity together verse 24 I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory the glory you have given me let's just pray as we finish off this time in uh, reflecting on on Jesus's prayer father I thank you for this time I thank you Jesus that you lead us in this in this lifestyle of prayer you teach us how to pray you teach us to pray for those that, that the Lord has given us you teach us to pray Lord God and to intercede for people you teach us to walk in unity Lord God you teach us father God to to love as you have loved to reflect you in this world that the world may look at us and see you you teach us Lord God to commit to the work that you've given us to do father give us the strength give us the courage give us the wisdom to to know the work you've given us to do and commit to it in Jesus name Amen, Amen.